develop a diary. Italy won for a man on the zombie on Wednesday at 1500 hours. It looks like the new DLC will be called Blood Alone. And this is part one. Ciao a tutti ragazzi e ragazza. Sono Tommy, sono italiano e sono molto bello e una acqua naturale per favore. Mano de Zombie here to welcome you all to a new Hearts of Iron 4 Death Diary. As you know, summer is coming. <laughs> yeah. wow. And before my mind goes too distracted by the pleasure of Swedish summer, I want to tell you about the first country to be revealed for the upcoming Iron 4 expansion by Blood Alone. Avanti ragazzi! And as you might have guessed, the country in question can be known under the La Bella Italia. Italia. Similar to how we did in the last time for No Stop Back, this first dev diary will focus on the content related to the historical and common branches of the Focus Tria Italiana. In short, everything that comes for free with the Avalanche patch. Note that some content might change based on previous DLC being active or not. Carbonara. As usual, keep in mind that everything you're about to see is still work in progress, so things might change before release and you will see placeholder stuff. And here is Como uh, amo, Piacere is uh, El Padre Benito Mussolini. Uh, already we see, I mean, this is Victor Emanuel, we know this one, but these two are new. I don't know what exactly that is, we're gonna find out. Italia joined the Triple Entente in the Great War after having been promised several territorial gains in Trentino and South Tyrol, Austria, Littorale, Friuli, Istria, Dalmatia. Expansione in Africano colonies and small part of Cannonia, Albania and Antalya. Oh, that sounds cool, like you have to unite all that shit in an achievement. Mm. I'm using too much energy and I already feel my buddies going weak, man. Where was I? However, many of these promises would not be honored by the Allies during the Treaty of Versailles, with Italy receiving only a bit of the land. Dude, it looks like World War II is really a lot of the fault of the Treaty of Versailles, man. They really shit on everyone, and then they all got mad. While the cause of the war had been dire for the country, which was highly in debt after the war. Ah, Burgundy. Margarita. All this caused high social unrest, leading to Bienno Rosso, and later to the rise of fascism, with Benito Mussolini at the helm. Through propaganda, violencia, murder and intimidation, the fascists managed to entrench fascism in Italia. Implementing a corporate economic system and pursuing aggressive foreign policies with the ambition to expand Italian territoria in the Balkans, irredentism sentiment was fairly generalized. During the early 20s and 30s, the campaign for the pacification of Libya resulted in the commitment of multiple atrocities, and in October 1935, Italy invaded Ethiopia. This action was condemned by the League of Nations, however, the League of Nations did not take strong steps to discourage an Italian military buildup around the Ethiopian border or took any drastic measures against Russia uh, Italy during the war. Out of fear of antagonizing Putin uh, Italy to the point of pushing Putin, uh, Mussolini to an alliance with Ch China Germany, the italo ethiopian conflict soon became the scenario of many more war crimes. And after this little piece of historical context, let's take a look at Italia 1936. Il Duce, he gives you power, he has problem with command power, and he's very good with laws, man. He makes easy laws. As you can see, Mussolini now has a trait, which can be upgraded throughout the focus tree. More on this later. There's a fair amount of starting national spirits. The first three on the left you probably know from the current version. No changes there. The other five will... Five more? Alhamdulillah. We'll go into detail later, since they will be recurring elements in the appropriate branches. Civilian industry, military industry, army, air force, and navy. <laughs> Looking at the map, there's been a few changes. Let me briefly talk about some of the most relevant ones. The split of the former Istria state into Litorale and the city of Trieste, and Istria with the city of Rijeka whose name has changed to Fiume when under Italiano control and which is now Italian at the start. 
In the beautiful coast of Dalmatia, the formerly missing victory points of Zadar, Zara, when under Italian control, and Kotor have made an appearance, and Dubrovnik's location has been adjusted. Compliance in Zara has been increased from 0 to 70%. They represent the significantly big amount of Italian population in the region. Okay, you need less police there. Music too loud? Enjoy the fucking music, man, you muppet. In Albania, the new victory point Dures was added so that the Arana is no longer on the coast. More importantly, Italy will now have resources right there. Oh. There are a fair amount of new victory points all around. Italy wants to keep in line of our country's VPs and states will now have the Italian name. Bologna, Ferrara, Parma, Firenze, Bella Firenze. I, I, I literally just yesterday, all day long, I was watching documentaries of Lisa about food in this region, man. On Arte, my German brothers, it's in the Arte Media take. Sutish in the Toscana. Super. There's a new state in the south, Puglia, split from the former Calabria with several new VPs popping up. Compliance in Libya has been drastically reduced to 35% and slightly increased in Eastern if African colonies to better represent colonial management. Okay. In Eritrea, Asmara is no longer on the coast. Some provinces have been split into new VPs and railways appear to be better represented the situation in the Utopian conflict. Regarding the order of battle, there's also been some changes to it with a couple of new battalions popping up. First, we have the Militia Battalion, which is Itali, is used to represent the Black Shirts, which, by the way, will have a new 3D model. Oh, shit. Oh, all the edgy 12-year-olds are going to use this model so much, man. Oh, you're going to see that everywhere. Thank you, Verbrand. Militias are a new type of infantry. Oh, where did they get that from? With slightly less organization, but also lower training time. Italian Militia, that's cool, because now, even in vanilla, you can put shitty divisions as uh, shore defenders. You don't have to make real infantry anymore. Italian militia battalions are used in black shirt divisions, which are cap divisions, a gift from our amazing coders that allows us to script lock divisions that can be recruited with a max cap, so that you cannot recruit more than this. Okay, you cannot have that many. Camicine Nere! Nere is black, yeah. Camicere means shirt then. As we see later, the Italian blacks can be improved throughout the focus tree. Also, mostly over here, man, hiding in Italy. Look at this. The second new battalion is the Irregular Infantry, used to represent the large variety of non-regular units and bands that took part in both sides of the Italo-Ethiopian War and the African Campaign in World War II. They will also have their own 3D models. It's fucking cool, actually. I like it. Irregulars are also a new type of infantry with overall slightly lower stats, especially Orc, but to a minor degree also moral attack and defense. However, they have slightly more HP, lower supply and equipment needs, and above all important bonuses in hills, forests, deserts, and mountains. So they might be valuable to both garrison your colonies in Africa. It's like an Africa core in a way. Thank you, World Reaper Man. Thank you. Looks like they kind of give you an Africa core now. Hmm. With, uh, by Blood Alone DLC, Italy will receive a significant amount of new 3D models. That's cool, man. That's really cool. I always felt... I'm gonna sound like a capitalist bitch now. Um, I was about to say Blizzard. Uh, Paradox could totally release a pack where you have to pay for cosmetics. Let's say, hey, gamer, if you pay us $4.99, you get, like, certain models like this. I will totally buy that. They should totally do that, man. Listen to Tommy make money, Paradox. Good shit, good shit. Good shit. I like, I like. Don't do that, Tommy. Sono capitalista. Regarding Italian unit leaders, the general roster has increased greatly. Yeah, there was only two leaders in five years of 4 Rodolfo Graziani, everybody knows him. He's the only fucking leader in, in fucking Italy. And uh, what was the name of that other guy? Giovanni Messe. Messe? Messe? Rodolfo Graziani and Giovanni Messe. This is the only two guys Italy ever had. Fucking crazy. Now they have more. Political advisor lists also way larger than before. Nice. Dude, this is cool, man. I'm, I'm excited, dude. I cannot wait to do achievements. I always loved Italy, man. In Hoi 4. Italy is so sick, dude. Because Italy had so many ways to go. You can do air, you can do infantry, you can do tanks. You have mainland stuff, you have Africa stuff. Navy is a big factor. How do you handle that? Italy has so many ways to go. I, I really like Italy, man. Crazy to think they never got updated yet, huh? Oh la la, advisors. Now it's a bunch of Italian designers. Nice. Cantieri Navali Tossi. Very good restaurant in Livorno. Oh, look at that submarine bonus. Oh my god, that looks insane. 
That is the biggest submarine bonus I think I've ever seen in the game. You completely say goodbye to real ships, but your submarines are just insane. Oh, that's not good. Odero Terni Orlando. Oh, that does not sound good. Oh, God. Kratakant. Heavy... 10% uh, range? Heavy fighter are pretty strong. Uh, Italian submarines are gonna be fucking insane. Bereski, where's Beretta? Yeah, there's Beretta. Beretta and a hey, cool Ducati. Astaldi, Terni Industria. Ajip. Ajip is a uh, fuel, right? Ferrovie, they, they probably make uh, chocolate. Ital Cementi. They probably make Italian cement. Oh, the, the Mafia does that too. Wink, wink. Last but not least, we will not go too deep into the Italian utopian war today. So I will just say that with BBA dragging the war forever to farm XP might not be a great idea. There are systems in place that will seriously damage Italy if the war drags on too long. Day! I always said years ago, just look at multiplayer and you see what the game needs, dude. There are systems, blah, 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 League of Nations and internally. Public discontent, resistance in the colonies and defection the army. Damn, that's cool. Nice, that's really cool. But now that we have known a bit more about the, the Naziale status of Italia, let's just take a look at the new focus tree. Excluding Alt Historic. Ah, can we... Ah, here, here we go. Oh shit, fuck yeah, dude. As you can see, the Italian tree has grown considerably, hopefully making future Italian playthroughs more flavorful. Yeah, hopefully, man. I mean, dude. Come on, let's get started with the leftmost colonial tree. Utopian War Logistics. Ministry of Africa, you then build up Ethiopia, Libya, Eritrea, and Somalia then. This is pretty much just building stuff there, serfs and oil. <coughs> Interesting. <clears throat> oh, you have colonial police. Italian colonies in Africa included Libya and North Africa, unified as a single colony in 1934, and Eritrea and Italian Somaliland in the Horn of Africa, which were unified in 36 along with Ethiopian territories in the province of Italian East Africa as governorates. In game, this branch will allow you to manage and boost your colonial territories and colonial troops. Um, I, 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 I know paradox nowadays, and I think they will have a colonial. Um, they will have some kind of achievement. A lot about the colonies, like as Ethiopia take Rome while wiping your own ass or some shit. It's gonna be some colony. They love colony achievements. Uh, In-game, the friends will allow you to manage and boost blah blah blah. Once the war of Utopia is over, the focus Ministry of Italian Africa will unlock new occupation laws. Colonial Police. Colonial Police is, um... You, you lose content, but you get manpower from them. This focus will also unlock a decision category to deal with colonial management. Initially, it will allow you to train, disband, and reorganize irregulars. The latter strengthening irregular divisions with more battalions. The problem I always have with these uh, storyline divisions is, why would the player ever care, you know? Do I want to invest in division the Paradox gives me, or do I just make my own division? Uh, let's see how that works, but I, I always feel like I'd rather just make my own thing. Do you think you could win a Zootopia against Italy? Well, we, we probably have to for an achievement, man. And it's actually very possible, you just have to grind um, in the mountains. Very old school stuff. <sighs> Train irregulars, disband them, reorganize them. Second, Italo, you can... Add. Oh, if you take too long, it, it escalates. That's fucking cool, man. Developing the different colonies will add a level of infrastructure and building slot in some states. Completing the focus, regional development will not only add a factory, naval base, and extra building slot to some previously developed states. It will also improve the colonial police occupation law and unlock decisions to add a building slot and increase the state category, blah, 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 blah. Okay, we're building up our colonies. I get it, man. <clears throat> Further down the pressure left, you can improve the colony. Yeah, you can improve your colonies. I get it, man. At the bottom right of the branch, you manage your colonial troops. You get some... Dude, this guy's a... these guys are desert geniuses. That's actually kind of nice. Finally, you can boost your irregular troops, spawning some extra divisions and locking the iconic irregular leader, Amedo Giliette. Damn, he's good. He's good. He gives irregulars. He's a good Africa leader, yeah. Known as Comandante Diavolo. A very interesting guy, by the way. And Emo, one of the coolest new focus icons. Hmm. What does Diavolo mean, Italians? Comandante Diavolo. Like the, the, the devil commander or something? Or. What does that mean? Devil, devil. The devil commander. Okay. 
Let's talk about in, in industry. Oh, oh, mi amor, mucho. I see research. I like highway steel. This looks very, very good for the 60. Oh, I mean, like you, dude. Nice, 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 bro, bro. First thing first, Italy had never had in this, uh, has now two initial national spirits related to industry that can be improved throughout the focus stream. Instituto per la Ricostruzione Industriale was born in 1933 as a temporary state institution sponsored by Benito Mussolini and Guido Young, among others, and with Alberto Beneduce at the helm. Dude, I just love Italian, man. Italy is the coolest country. The Iri became the owner of the three largest Italian banks and many large companies such as Ansaldo, Alfa Romero, Credar, and Terni. In game, this is represented by a discount and all designers. You build SIFs faster and your designers are nice. That's cool, okay. You probably want to keep that early game to have SIF building speed. Italian military industry was significantly smaller compared to the other major countries in the war. Most raw materials had to be imported and there was little stockpile of resources when Italy entered the war. In fact, many Italian merchant ships were in foreign ports at the time and were immediately impounded. Fucking dumbass Italy. <laughs> Furthermore, the Italo-Ethiopian War, also known as the Italo-Abyssinian War, and the Italian massive involvement in the Spanish Civil War on the side of the Nationalist had an extraordinary high cost not only for the Italian treasury but also in terms of equipment and lives. Most of the military's budget during the late 30s was consumed by these wars, seriously hampering a very much needed military modernization. Finally, the huge influence of the state-owned Ansaldo, part of the Iri as mentioned above, made it harder for other companies to present new designs and get a contract, which reduced com competence and didn't help keeping up acceptable production capabilities. The paradox is like always using hard language, uh, hard English, man. Uh, if, we, uh, if you want to improve your English grade, just fucking translate these death diaries, man. Uh, blah, 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 blah. All these things are represented in game by a lot of red modifiers for recent production. Military industry. Your armor research sucks. Weapon, artillery, air. Minus 10 factor, but this is pretty bad. That shit fucks you over, man. Back to the focus tree. The old Italian highway focus has been modified to the industrial branch. It will now grant less insta infrastructure, but it will add temporary state modifiers. Okay, man. Hmm. That kind of they kind of want you to build industry early then uh, infrastructure, but who does that? I think many players will just ignore the twenty five percent infrastructure because I'd rather build a SIF than 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 infrastructure in, in the first year, man. The sub branch right below will generally add some SIFs and improve the EU national spread. You can choose between investing in developing North or South Italy. Oh, South the South. The North always look down on us, man. They think we're the past, and this is very discapazione between the North and the South. The focused new industrialization program will unlock some industrial decisions based on the region you went for. In the central sub branch, you will find some more railway lines, consumer goods reductions, some are temporary, and some are permanently applied to the EMA. And your fifth research slot. Oh, molto bene. Uh, Italy boasted the very first power plant in Europe, plus two SIFs, minus five consumer goods, boy, I'm in. Investment in Edison. Alfa Romero production. Do, do, do all my cars get minus 80 reliability if I do that? So funny, subscribe. To the right, the military sub-branch will grant some military factories, some forts along the Alps, and research and production bonuses. If the South Focus Tree gives you, uh, uh, um, 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 uh, forts in the south, then the south one would be better multiplayer, because the allies made you in the south, kind of, right? You never know, though. It depends if you lose North Africa. Two mills here, and you get a truck update. Two, two 75 truck updates. That means early mechanized, man. Very big. Vallo alpino occidentale. Vallo... This is like, uh, defensive walls, huh? They're all alpine, though. At the end of the branch, there's another decision to be made in order to boost your production lines, which will have a small consumer goods penalty in exchange. You lose only one consumer good for really, really good bonuses. Keep specialization. Hmm, that looks really strong, man. Looks really cool. Army. The Bandits War Traditions. Moschitere del Duce. This is all in Italian, I like that. So there's, this is tanks and this is infantry or something? The Italian Royal Army Regio Esercito was not in the great shape in 36. 
There was a concerning lack of modern equipment. Italian tanks were of poor quality. They kind of worked in Utopia, since enemy forces basically lacked tanks or anti-tank equipment. And most of the artillery guns dated from World War One. In game, the initial national spirit Regio SRC though, will provide some penalties at the game start in order to represent that. However, the spirit can be greatly improved. Yeah, pretty big debuff in the beginning. Back to the army branch. Army primacy is not the top 35 day focus now. And right below it, there are two options keep traditional warfare or approach mobile warfare. But it looks like the developers are pushing you in one direction. You either go grand battle plan or mobile. Superior firepower and, grand, uh, and mass assault is not really open for you. You have to make a decision there. I like that though. It's cool. 10 division speed. Oh, I like that. At the 0.3. Army XP daily. That's insane. Normally you get 0 0.09 and stuff. 0 0.3, I thought? The Bandit War is about armor. Damn, nice, dude. The central focus of this branch, dude, when I play Italy, I'm gonna totally do armor Italy, man. Like armored cars or something. The central focus of this branch, Super Assassito, uh, we're getting super sane, represents the military organization that Italy undertook in the mid 1940s. All three military branches have a central focus like this. These focuses require Italy to be at war against a major country. They will move for significantly reduce some penalties. Super Ercacito. Nice. You're okay. The focuses to the left are mostly focused on boosting special forces. Ah, the left one is Mountaineers and Marines. Oh, that's good. Creates free paratroopers. You get paratroopers for free. And you get some great fucking... St oh, that's interesting. This is... If you Man, that's cool. You kind of have Armor Italy and Special Forces Italy now. Cool. To the right, the branch emphasizes more the military industry, production, etc. And you can choose between ending the Fiat and Saldo Duopoli, removing research penalties from your starting NS, or modernizing and sell the facilities for a bit more production and military factories. Either way, just like we saw with the industry focuses, these focuses will also slightly increase our consumer good needs, representing blah, 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 blah. blah. So you can always lose consumer goods, but you get nice little bonuses. With 15% armor research speed, man. Oh, my mama. 15% air research. Ah, this actually, I'm doing this wrong. You get it back. You have a negative, so it's not it's not that crazy. Air stuff. Air is obviously very interesting for Italy, because they're the air maker. The Italian Royal Air Force, Regia Aeronautica, became an important propaganda tool for the fascist regime during the 1920s and 1930s. Italian aviators established numerous records and won multiple world championships. <sighs> However, the first tests for Italian Air Force were not successful during Italian Utopian War, even though Italy faced literally no opposition in the air. The Regia Aeronautica lost 70 aircraft and 100 people. Oh, porco Dio. Shortly after, during the Spanish Civil War, more than 700 aircraft and 6,000 personnel were sent to aid the Nationalists. The Italian fighter Fiat CR-32 proved superior to the Soviet Polikarpov I-15 and I-16, used by the Republicans, which helped make the Nationalists have the upper hand both in terms of quantity and quality of air, leading the Air Ministry to believe that the Italian biplanes could, in fact, still dominate the skies in major conflicts. Not long after, they will be proved wrong. The National Spirit, the Regia Aeronautica, is meant to represent these factors. Interesting, yeah. Interesting. <clears throat> Similar to the army branch, Super Aero is the central focus of the air branch. To the right, expand Rome Flying School and officers of the service role were mainly helped with some of the penalties, representing better trained pilots and better maintenance for the aircraft, which might help prevent some catastrophic accidents. Will you be able to change the fate of Pietro Pintor and Pellegrini, who perished in an air accident and they... Oh, you have like a, a Emilia Earhart event now. If you fix that, they don't crash or something. And then you have like two really good aces. Adriano Visconti La Tigre and Vittorio Postino Sanseverino. You get cool aces, man. Air Italy might be really strong, man. Maybe Italo Balbo could have survived had there been better conditions. Adriano Visconti. Dude, Italians always sound so sexy, right? In Germany, what's your name? Ich bin der Ronny Müller. Ich bin der Stefan. Was geht? And all the girls run away. Then you meet an Italian guy, right? He might not even be looking good, but you're like, Hi, what's your name? Sono Adriano Visconti della Italia. Dude, instantly your pants will be down, you get in your dick sucked, man. Italian names are so sexy, especially in Germany, you get a lot of girls with that. 
Standardization and specialization present another decision to make production cost reduction or design cost reduction. Uh -huh. At the bottom part of the tree, we'll have multiple air templates. Okay, cool. Oh, shit. Dude, just, so, just show me the submarines and nothing matters. Oh, mamma mia. Damn. Sorry? <sighs> the Italian Royal Navy Regia Marina. The Regia Marina, that sounds like a fucking Italian Instagram model porn act. What? Also suffered some issues. One of the main issues was the lack of modern equipment, such as radar and sonar, due to which the Italian Navy had really hard times detecting enemy vessels on the foul weather. Oh, I can't find the enemy ship! Probably even more important was the really poor coordination between Italy High Command, Commando Supremo, and Regia Marina, which made it especially difficult to coordinate the efforts of the Navy during naval operation. Even though the situation improved later on the establishment of the Supermarina during the early stages of World War II, critical mistakes were made. In game, this is represented in the Regia Marina National Spirit. Okay. You gotta fix this shit. Okay, got it. In this branch, you can expect a bunch of dockyards, naval bases, research, and production bonuses. Blah, blah, blah. Just like in the previous branches, Supermarina is the central focus, which gives you something really good. Cool. Naval cooperation programs will send an event to Sweden to represent the historical purchase of some old Italian escort ships in exchange for a minor consumer good bonus for Italy. It also unlocks the homonymous decision category, which with decisions to get small boosts for doctrines and create a naval focused research sharing group. Okay, cool. There are also choices to be made in naval branch, emphasizing on screen ships or brutal force of capital ships. And you can have uh, German maneuvers and stuff. Yugo maneuvers, Romania maneuvers, that's cool. I don't see a lot of Ital naval Italy's running around multiplayer, mm -hmm. though, man. I hope there's. I hope they have certain achievements to force that stuff. Like, as Italy have four carriers and destroy the pride of the US fleet or something. That that sounds annoying, but also kind of cool. Probably more than annoying, though. You know, force people to do this. Oh, shit. At the bottom left, you have another choice this time between sizes of submarines. Will you go for long-range cruiser submarines? Yes. Or will you rely on easy-to-produce midget submarines to harass enemy convoys? I'm not making Hobbit submarines, man. Both focuses grant a couple of dockyards and some dockrants and research bonuses and will unlock the appropriate hull. Dude, you can't have cruiser submarines, Arthur. People will harass Atlantic so much, and we'll add a couple of them to your production lines. Additionally, Midget Submarines <laughs> unlocks decisions to sell these cute things to your minor allies. Uh -huh. I can sell Midgets to miners? <laughs> what the fuck? Export Midgets. <laughs> Jesus. Paradox. To the opposite side, the choice is about carriers. Italy had no carriers in World War II, but there were plans to convert a couple of fast liners into proper carriers with powerful engines. Here you can go for that option and get the design for the Aquila class carrier. And you can choose... Italians, what does Aquila mean? Um, blah, 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 civilian, blah, 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 blah. Is Aquila like a word meaning something? It means eagle? Ah, Aquila. Eagle carrier. Refit civilian ships or make real carriers. You can make easy to build carriers or like big ones. Oh, that looks cool. The problem, once again, right, it takes forever to build these guys, man. The game is mostly over. That's the problem with Navy, man. You can win the game, especially single-player, without ever touching Navy, man. That's the problem. To me, I always felt like Navy is just a little side game. It's a little meme for the side, if you're really into that. <clears throat> the focus is in between. We'll grant some more dockyards, research, blah, blah, blah. You get bonuses. I fucking get it. Uh, let's skip to the political branch for a moment. Let's jump to the far right of the tree. Talk briefly about foreign politics. Uh, foreign affairs. Let's go with the right. Corpo di truppe volontiare. This probably means... Um, s oh, cool. So this is probably about volunteers to Spain. Then you can do something in Spain. And then you can befriend Portugal. You could even de demand the Balears. Uh, pretty old school stuff. Balkan ambition. Albanian occupation. And then you build... That's cool. I always needed that, man. You take Albania, but then you also build up Albania. That's cool. Guarantee Austria? It's like anti-Russian. Ratify the Stresa Front. Italy, Japan. You join the Allies here a bit or something. Pact of Steel, obviously Germany. The good old German stuff. And Italy first, which is kind of still the same as back in the day. Oh, sorry, guys. <clears throat> 
<laughs> That's the anti-drummond tree, the left one? Okay. In this branch, which is shared with other old historical paths, you can first decide to antagonize Yugoslavia by getting claims on the Dalmatian coast and sending ultimatum to them. Or you can seek to find reliable allies in the Balkans, potentially Yugo, Romania, and the Bulgis. At the leftmost part, we have the Albanian sub-branch, in which you will send ultimatum to Albania, just like usual, but then you also can boost oil extraction there. Support Albania, the rentism for some fast claims in the Balkans, and form the Albanian fascist militia, which apart from unlocking the colonial and police occupation law in Albanian states will also increase the black short division cap, blah blah blah. Cool. Albania, Albania. At the rightmost part, I Iberia, you can kinda just do stuff in Spanish Civil War, I get it. Join Germany, it's kinda self-explanatory. And then the political branch. Ooh, I can't open this. I can't see, I can't open! I can't open. Un momento, toy. Hey, 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 bruda. That was very dumb, Tommy. Uh, I can't read this. Maybe they're doing it better later. No. <clears throat> we'll go through the focuses in a moment, but first we need to talk about the main system for Italy. Mussolini's missions. Would have mission, alter. Or, as some of the team nicknamed them, the, the Missolinis. The Missolini's, I thought. Thank you, Duke, man. What's up, dude? Thank you, man. Stay healthy, Tommy Love. The main purpose of the system is to both represent the growing ambitions of one of the most famous fascist dictators, while also being a tool with which to help guide new players towards making beneficial decisions preparing for conflicts to come. A Missolini will usually pop up around January and June, with a few exceptions. Ex 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 exceptions! Exceptions, mamma mia. Uh, and consist of an event in which you are presented with Mussolini's demands, activating a mission. You need to complete the mission before the time is out, otherwise you fail the Duce. I thought I am the Duce. We wanted the system to offer some challenges and reward players, not to punish people uh, for not doing whatever some random fascist guy wants them to do. So while succeeding on these missions, we'll grant some appealing rewards, which can vary depending on the theme of the mission. Failing them will only have mild penalties. So you should never feel like you have to do them. Long story short, Mussolini has ambitions, many ambitions, and he wants you, dear player, to fulfill them. Spoiler alert, you're about to see a lot of work in progress stuff, so bear with me. Ay ay ay. We're only halfway done, man. Jesus. At least I have some content for once, huh? Look at that. As you already know, Italy starts the game at War of Utopia. So the first Mussolini will pop uh will which will pop up a couple of weeks after the game starts, Mussolini will ask you to make some actual progress in the war at the end of the Utopian Christmas offensive. In this case, you have two options. You can opt for a major offensive to try to advance by all means necessary, or you can choose a more methodical approach. Be wise in your decision, because it will affect the Duce's expectations and the time you have to show him that your wise strategy is doing something. The war escalates by one, you gain offensive and utopia, 15% attack bonus. It Italy gets 75% more air support for 180 days. Uh, you cannot really lose to utopia with that. Logistics in Utopia, that's supply consumption and stuff, damn. Sad. Michelinis. I think this to-do means that the devs of, uh, it tells them, hey, you gotta do this, man. Conquer Northern and Southern Utopia. And if you don't do it, you get fucked. The first set of Michelinis will pop up during the first year of the game. Our preset, and as mentioned above, aimed at guiding new players to do stuff. It will be useful, such as building so in factories, having a short manpower in the field. Or st I like that. Later on, Michelinis will be randomized. That sounds a bit unfortunate, like that after a while, Michelinis get really annoying. Like, you enjoy them for four hours, and then you're just, uh, click, click, yeah, I'm doing it, shut up, I have more important stuff to do. You know? Increase your fuel reserves, and if you do that, you get mad bonuses for one year. Damn. Look at these bonuses you get, man. Ay, ay, ay. Back to the political branch. These first few focuses are a bit special in the sense that they cannot be completed manually. Instead, they will be auto-completed. You can't really see how Paradox is learning from mod developers, man. Succeeding in both missions before timeout will auto-complete solid progress. Uh, if you fail in at least one of them, you will have to choose via event to auto-complete either of the focuses at the side. It's kind of cool. The value the Lira Anglo Italian agreements, topple Amhara rulers, the new emperor of Utopia, and culto al duce. Uh, so the problem is what you want if you're going historical. 
Struggle in Etopia might be useful if you're aiming for an old history fascist monarch run. Uh, only you have the DLC, because if you don't, you can't play that, you poor fuck. But it's still not the end of the world if you want to go historical, but you failed the missions, okay? You get a bit fucked. The Abyssinian fiasco is what you want if you're thinking of taking Italy towards a completely different path. Ah, Paradox always does that if you want to go to a different path, you gotta fuck yourself a bit, and this is kind of where you fuck yourself. This focus is not available without BBA, but nice commercials. But, but, thought, but thought, thought it would be good to show it here. Uh, if you have Lars' tongues completing the focus, Savizio Informazione Militare will uh, immediately create an intelligence agency for the That's good. Granting an extra operative. Damn. Rosa Danelli. Yeah, I think they don't. After you triumph from Africa, you have a selection of focuses to help you out. The post situation, consumer goods, etc. Once Triumph of Africa has completed the new system, I'm getting actually hyped about this, man. I'm kind of fucking happy. Yo, a national balance of power. What the fuck? Balance of power is a new feature, accessible through the main political view, once active. That provides a modular and generic system for a slider that can be driven almost any way and provide many different outputs. Watch out, very work in progress. That's fucking cool. National balance of power. This is Mussolini and this is like military? Take over ministries, praise the army. Uh, in the uh, image above, you can see a slider with certain thresholds on an icon in, at each extreme representing the Grand Council of Fascism to the left and Il Duce to the right. The value of this slider can be modified via effects or modifiers, making the slider move towards one side or the other. The bubbles represent thresholds. Once the slider value trespasses a threshold, effects can be triggered and modifiers can be activated. In Italy, there's a bubble in the middle of the side that represents a neutral range, not belonging to any particular side, blah, blah, blah. However, by default, the Italian balance of power starts already in favor of Mussolini, activating the modifiers in the rightmost green bubble. Only one threshold can be active at the same time. So each time you reach a new threshold, the new modifier comes in. In this case, you get, you get two stability, two war support, and 7% more PP if the Duce becomes stronger. Okay, basic stuff. Keep in mind that each balance of power is different, and sometimes you might want to go in into one of the sides, whereas other times you might want to stay balanced. Because if you go for total dominance of Mussolini, you lose you lose daily army XP, man. Wow, I've never seen that before. Losing daily army XP. In Italy, moving full into the Duce's side grants fairly good bonuses, but also comes with minor penalties to represent issues of having one unchecked authoritarian figure meddling in literally every possible middle military affair. However, moving too much towards the Grand Council is also bad, because you lose war support and stability. And you just gain political advisor cost minus 15, that's ultra trash. But, if you go here, something happens. You activate the Grand Council of Fascism, becomes the leader of the party. This all looks very negative, why would I do that? In the end, you get this. Ah, the non-aligned supporters start a civil war. That's how you get democracy and kingdom and everything. There will totally be an achievement about this, I'm pretty sure, and we will have to do this on stream. I'm very sure we gotta do this. Short events and focus. Blah, 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 blah. Lion Tamer. Okay, the national. Yeah. They all don't have that much game impact. They're kinda cool, but it's not like they decide if you win or not. Uh, you might have noticed that there are decisions inside the balance of power window. These decisions belong to regular decision category that has been tagged to be used for this BOP. The decisions will also move the BOP in either blah blah blah, we get that. There are also certain advisors, the Italian hierarchs, oh shit, that move the balance of power towards the Grand Council of Fascism and Hired. Each hierarch is cheaper than your regular advisor. All of them provide 5% daily PP, which is like nothing, and 0.05 daily fascism support, in addition to blah blah blah. So when I want to rush to destroy Il Ducia, I need to take one of these early. If you're desperate, there are bump decisions for Mussolini to take over the Ministry of Position, the Harris, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, okay, they fight each other. I kind of get it, man. We got it. We got it. We got it, man. Back to Italian Focus 3. Let's quickly finish the political branch. If you get the call to Il Duce, Mussolini branch opens up. Man of Providence. I don't know what any of these mean. Looks like just strengthening yourself with stability and stuff. To the left, you have focuses mostly related to Mussolini and his traits. They like doing that now, especially we saw that with Stalin in No Step Back, that now there's a lot of focuses that create your character, your leader, right? They give them like bonuses and stuff. A bit RPG-ish, which I think is great. Um, 
Blah 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 blah. Grain land and birth. To live as a lion, for example, gives you lion tamer. Um, la Tactaglia per la terra gives you PP gain minus two consumer goods for seven or thirty days, and he can be a capo, Hi, which makes him um, make uh, puppets easier. Capo de tutti capri, Tanin, mille grazie. These two branches will merge further down to the final late game sub branch, in which you will find claims, war goals, etc. Masters of the Mediterranean, Masters of the Aegean. Bend the bars. Subdue the Sentinels. The Colonial Empire. Gain claim on every Egyptian, Kenyan, Sudanese, blah blah blah. This is where you take Africa. And we are in the last two remaining sub branches shared with the other old history branches. On the left, we have the Internal Affairs sub branch, providing bonuses to stability, war support, and PP. Uh, and also granting some extra operatives. Uh, it sounds a bit boring, unfortunately. To the right, we have the Blackshirt subbranch. Security militias provided mostly manpower and resistance bonuses. The Battaglioni di Assolto unlocks a new support battalion, the Blackshirt Assault Battalion, which helped adding some extra stuff to take breakthrough to blah 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 blah. I wonder if there's achievement about the Blackshirts, because to me, only achievements matter. Strengthen the Blackshirts, blah blah blah. And we're done with the Italian focus tree. Or are we? There's one last thing I wanted to show you. Do you remember that thing we mentioned earlier about the Civil War? Well, when reaching the final threshold of the Council and the Balance of Power, the event of the Civil War will trigger. For the Civil War, each side will potentially become a puppet of the other faction leader. And each side in the war, when appropriate in a historical game, the fascist Italian Social Republic will remain in the axe and become Germany's puppet. While the break... Wait, I have a Civil War, but I don't even get all of Italy? Damn. The non-aligned kingdom of Italy will join the allies. There are a few prefix state splits based on which states are occupied by enemies when the civil war starts. The occupiers will also receive an event at which they can cede those states. If you don't have BBA, you will become the Italian Socialist Republic, blah blah blah. Both the Italian Socialist Republic and the Kingdom of Italy have a custom civil war branch. That's cool. The anti-fascist branch to the left. <laughs> Only playable with BBA. This guy is really doing commercials here. Starts by applying a state modifier in the Italian state controlled by the fascist enemies. The Italian Social Republic significantly increasing resistance. After that, there are two opinions based on your choice. Monarchist or Communist. Uh-huh. The King's Finest. Makes you a monarchist and gives you some divisions. And this is Communism, which gives you the Gabisti. Which is all about resistance and shit. Oh, damn, that looks cool. They have their own little uh, shirt, man. The Grande Rivolta Rurale not only has the most wonderful donkey I can ever. What? Oh, it's a donkey. Also available in the National Spirit size. It also provides some fairly good bonuses. Grande Rivolta Rurale. It's a very, very big communist uh, bonus. Grants Mountain Warfare Doctrine. Militias have a massive mountain and hill bonus. Okay. If I want to win the Civil War, I should probably do Mountain Militias. Cool. In the Social Republic branch on the right, you can not only spawn some black shirt divisions, but also permanently improve militia battalions and black shirt assault battalions. Integrate Polizia dell'Africa Italiana will spawn several Ascari colonial troops. Divisions here control colonies, blah 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 blah. Last but not least, both branches have an Italian independence focus at the end, which works just the same for each side. It gets unlocked until the once the civil is over, and it will send an event to Italian overlord requesting independence. If the overall refuse Italian attack, we get an independence war goal. Okay. This, you either get free from Germany or the Allies, or you have to fight them. Smells like an achievement, Ren. Take, win the civil war, and then kill your overlord or something. That's all from me. Here are some images. Capo di tutti capri, molto bene. Congratulations, brother. You've seen this video till the end. Good job. Why don't you just click this video then now? You're over here anyway. Just click it.